Hi guys, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. I'm going to talk about the healing of a gift. Um, dear Lord, I thank you for what you've done, and I thank you for what you're about to do. Permeate every heart, permeate every spirit, permeate every soul. Do what only you can do. Speak to all of us something different all at the same time. Let your glory fill this place where I am. Let your glory fill every heart, every space, every spirit. Speak to me, speak through me in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Like all oh, hell upon your feet. Like wine for you to drink. Like water from my heart. I pour my love on you. If praise is like perfume, I'll lavish mine on you. Till every drop is gone. I'll pour my love. Oh, you like oil upon your feet, like wine for you to drink, like water from my heart. I pour my love on you. If praise is like perfume, I'll lavish mine on you till every drop is gone. I'll pour my love on you. Yes, Jesus. We pour our love out today. We pour our reverence out today, Lord Jesus. We bow before you, Lord Jesus. We love on you today like with like crazy, God. You've been crazy good to us, God. And we just honor you. We just worship you. We just adore you. We just give you praise, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hi, guys. I, I have been ruminating on something interesting this week. Um, um, I've been ruminating on using your gift for heal healing. Um, like there's been a few people, um, that I've been w watching and paying attention to. One of them's a very famous writer. And one of them is a very famous producer and singer and has been around for years. And um, they, the writer is very, um, she's an amazing writer, one of my favorite authors. And she is very passionate about the subject of book banning, which I am very passionate about too. Um, if you guys don't know what this is, uh, book book banning in in some um, in some states they are actually banning books um, for children to read. And she is very passionate about the subject. Um, and she was talking about this whole thing and what, what, what she feels about it and whatever um, she had to say about it. So I was thinking, I was, I was questioning to myself, um, and it came to me that, um, to write, a, 
to write about it in the way she's written about so many things would be amazing to put characterization about it around it to um, make it fun or however she does it that would really get the message across and would would maybe help her get some of her thoughts out and get people uh, to listen. And then on the other side, I was I was thinking about this um, producer, this person that I grew up listening to. I grew up listening to his music, and he he came out with um, something recently that was explosive and changed his personal life. And I was. I was looking at him and looking at his face as he was doing an interview, interviews, and I, and the picture came to my head um, that I saw, I saw this person writing, writing songs to himself um, at whatever age he was, um, uh, at whatever age his trauma started. So I saw him writing a lullaby to baby him and I saw him writing writing a children's song to himself about what the adult man would tell himself and like going through his childhood to the age where he was now and just writing through it, saying whatever he wanted to say. And these songs that I saw him writing wouldn't be, um, wouldn't be songs for us, wouldn't be songs for other people. They could just, they would just be songs for him. Uh, perhaps, now I'm not a doctor or a therapist, but I'm like, perhaps that would help him heal to write and emote and to know that nobody's going to see it that he doesn't want to see it, you know. He could just play for himself or his wife and close family and friends or whatever. And I said, and I said, and I asked the Lord, why are you showing me this about uh, these people that I don't even know? One of them writing about his trauma in in a song in songs to himself um, about him what he would say to that younger self at the different ages and I even saw different styles of music when he was a baby he could write a lullaby to himself. Um, you know, I'm like, Lord, why are you showing me that? And why are you showing me this author putting putting the book band thing on paper as a short story? Um, he said, I'm showing... I'm showing you the two people that you admire for an example of people using their gift for healing. I need you to talk about um, how gifts can be used for healing. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today. Um, especially, expect, well, any gift, but especially um, artsy gifts like writing and music 
they're not only to spread a message to the world, they're also um, sometimes to help you emote your feelings, whether you're a writer, whether you're an artist, whether you're a musician or whatever. And it's nice to give to the world, but first, but before you have to give to the world, you need to give to yourself. Um, a lot of times, uh, people can use their gifts to run. People can use their gifts to do two things. People can use their gifts to run from themselves and run from what's going on, or to help them face themselves and work through those issues. And when I saw this, the producer, songwriter person, when I saw his face and he's like, um, this is new, this is uh, fairly new. Um, God actually, I don't know why, but God actually gave me a vision of him writing not personal, like, not not songs for other people, but just personal songs, so he get, gets it out and gets to talk to his younger self to examine some of those emotions that he's feeling. And as I said, these songs wouldn't be for anyone else but himself or who he, cho who he chose to share it with. And with the lady and, and the book banning thing, I imagined her. Now, she doesn't write short stories, but the Lord um, showed me a picture of her writing a short story about someone who was who was um, uh, affect, uh, positively affected by a book that was being banned. And just to use the arts, not just for other people, but just to get those emotions. Well, in his case, it was to get his emotions out and confront them. But in her case, it was to make, make people understand how uh, dangerous uh, book banning is. Um, and how, so each of these two people were using their gifts in a way to heal, to make aware. One of them was using it for, for themselves and one of them was using it to make other people aware how, how, how I think lethal it is for me to start banning books for children. That's only my opinion. Um, Um, but this is not about book banning, but this is about using your gifts and the, to heal. There are some, some of you out there that have gifts and the reason God gave you those gifts is not just to share them with the world and spread his message. Although that is the first reason. The second reason is for you to heal through your gifts. So the, the Lord just didn't only give you your gifts for other people, but he, give, he gave you your gifts to to be able to emote and heal yourself and no and to let him heal you you can't heal yourself but to let 
the gifts that he gave you be the vehicle that he can use for your healing. Not only, not only his healing of you, but your your understanding of and realization of yourself. Because with every sector of healing I've experienced in my own life, you you kind of get realization of yourself and you get new revelation, new things revealed of yourself because that's what revelation is. Revelation is the revealing of you and that's what healing does. With every level of healing becomes a new level of who you are and who God has created you to be. And that's why it's important to heal because God wants to reveal more of yourself to yourself. And he'll often do that to your gifts with your gifts or the gifts he's given you rather. When I was going through for those of you on Facebook who don't know, there there was a whole slew of sermons um, on here that I didn't put on YouTube. And for the past, um, I think about week, I've been working really hard just putting all these sermons up on YouTube that I was here in the pandemic. And you know how many of those sermons healed me? Oh my gosh. Like, uh, uh, some of the, some of the sermons have had titles and some of them didn't. And if they didn't, I had to listen and usually God, God gave me the title. But uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes either I came up with the title and checked with God, and sometimes he gave me the title. But going through all these sermons, first of all, y'all, I didn't know (laughs) that I had so many sermons on Facebook that weren't on YouTube. And these were sermons during the pandemic. Um, And all the revelation I got during the pandemic, I didn't even remember preaching most of these sermons. Some of them that I, I did remember, but most of them I didn't remember. And some of them healed me. Oh my gosh. Like, so my gift that God has graced me with, in turn, healed me. And I think that's what the Lord wants to do today. The Lord wants to bring healing through the, to you through the gifts he's given you. And you know how many times I preached the sermon and been blessed? and been helped by my own sermon either at that moment or that week or a few minutes later. I'm like, why am I saying this? Or whatever, why am I saying whatever? Um, And a week later, I would go back and I'll be like, oh my gosh, that's what I needed to hear. And it's my own voice talking to me. But it was my, it was the gift that God has given me actually healing me. Uh, the Lord wants to bring healing and restoration to your life, to yourself, to your circumstances. And he totally wants your gift, whatever gifting that is, 
to come back and bless you. It's not only to bless the world, but it's to bless you. And some people are selfish and like all that, but I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about those people who give and give and give and give until they can't give anymore. I'm saying to those people, your gift of helping is not only to help you, but not only to help other people, but it comes to serve you as well. Because when you're a constant giver, you tend to forget that you need healing as well. For me, um, for me, this happens all the time where I give and give and give so much. I give so much in preaching. I give so much of the knowledge that God has given me. I give so much away that sometimes I'm forgetting that Rachel the preacher, or Rachel the prayer warrior, or Rachel the friend, Rachel the client, Rachel the whatever, needs healing as well, needs love as well, needs sleep as well, needs, you know, comfort as well, needs to relax as well. Not like, and I'm learning that before I give to other people in ministry, before I do anything else in ministry, after I give to God, after I give him his praise and his worship, I need to give to myself that I'm as important, not so I have energy to give to other people, not, not yes for that, but not only for that, but just because not only are you guys his, but I am his as well, and I am as important to him and as loved by him as anyone else. And that is what I'm learning. I'm learning that, that it's okay to relax. It's okay to, um, to, uh, to take time for myself. It's okay to take it easy. It's okay to, to say no. It's okay to not answer every comment. It's okay um, to, to not engage in every video. I, I'm learning that it's okay to make time for me because if I don't make time for me, not only can I make time for you, but I can't make real time for him. And I'm learning that as much revelation as I give away to you guys, it's okay for me to keep some things for myself. So I'm learning that not everything I get from God has to be for you. Some stuff is just for me. And for me being a giver, that makes me that makes you want to give away everything. That's okay. And it's okay to not share everything or whatever. It's okay to have time for just me. And I need that time, not only just so I can give to you, that's one reason, but I need that time because I need to know that I'm loved. And for all you givers out there that give and give and give and give and until you're burnt out, you need to stop at the filling station and let him fill you up. Let, let your gift love on you. Let your gift for love teach you. Let other people love on you. Take care of you for a change. You've been giving so much. You've been giving to this family member. You've been giving to your boss. You've been giving to your mother who's died with cancer. You've been giving, 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 giving. 
but you haven't been letting people give to you. And it's time that you do that. It's time that you do that. And it's not selfish to take care of yourself. It is necessary to take care of yourself. Um, it's a balance. It's a balance. Because we're told being self-centered. Centered is bad. And being selfish is bad. But not all the time. I personally think it's where that selfishness comes from. Does that selfishness come from a need to say that you're the most important thing in the world and the world revolves around you? Or does that selfish need come from needing to feed yourself first? needing to give yourself oxygen first before you give to other people a lot of a lot of people give and give and give and they don't realize that they're that they're burning the candle on both ends and they're going to drop if they don't take a break and give to themselves If they don't take a break and give to themselves and take time for themselves, they'll be no good to anyone and they'll be no good to to themselves. And God says, "Let, let the gift you have for love give back to you. Let the gift you have um, for being gracious and understanding uh, feed you as well. Let, let the gift you have uh, for creativity minister to you as well. Because I didn't only give that gift for other people. I gave it for you as well, for you to get healed by, for you to get nourished by, for you to get whatever you need as well. And when people are are always giving to other people, they tend to run themselves dry. And if they don't take a a moment or an hour to fill themselves up, uh, they have nothing to give back. The, um, the, like you only have to give back what you have in, in the storage. You can't give away what you don't and if you give and give and give and give and give and give and give, eventually you'll run dry because nobody's superwoman, nobody's super mom, nobody's super man, and nobody's super dad, and nobody's super person. We all need to, to give away, but we all need to receive. So let your friends that have been offering to take your kids, take them. Don't say, yeah, I'm fine, when they can realize that you're not. Because sometimes the people around us, the people in our lives can realize something that we don't. And God is saying, you need to be able to give, but now it's time for you to receive. Now it's time for you to say yes to help. Now it's time for you to say, I I need to relax. I need to stop. I need to slow down. Thank you, Lord. Okay, guys. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.
like all upon his feet, like one to you drink, like water from my heart, I pour my love on you, and praises I could be, I lavish mine on you, till every drop is gone. I'll pour my the Lord wants the Lord wants to pour his love on you today. You've been loving everybody else for years. You've been giving to everybody else for years. And now the first one who wants to give to you, the first one who wants to pour his love on you. It's Jesus Christ. Let him do that today. Let him do that right now. Let him use your gift for care and compassion to free you. Thank you, Lord. We receive your love today. And we pour it right back to you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Like oil upon your feet, like wine for you drink, like water from my heart, I pour my love on you. And praise is like a peace, I lavish mine on you, till every drop is gone. I pour my love. Oh. Hi guys, see you later.